<laughs> yeah. Yeah. That does feel pretty good. Um, so a while back, I was uh, in Turkey. I was in Istanbul to do a workshop for a group of HR managers from different companies. And one of them had a question. She was like, Alex, we do everything for our employees. Uh, a few months back, we were asked that, you know, we, we give them good salaries, we give them a lot of education, we give them a beautiful office space, and they're still not happy. You know, com they complain a lot, uh, there's not a lot of energy, people don't seem like they, they actually care too much about their, why are these people not happy at work? We do everything for them. Uh, you know, a couple of months back, we asked them, what do you want since you're not happy? And they said, we want free smoothies. And we gave them free smoothies, and they were still not happy. So we asked them, what do you want now? And they say, we want a gym in the office. So we built a gym in the office, and nobody went, and they're still not happy. Uh, we asked them again, what do you want? They say, we want a swimming pool. We were like, no, you're not getting a swimming pool. And, and this is a, the, 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 the situation that a lot of companies right now find themselves in, that they really want their employees to be happy and engaged and motivated. And they're doing a lot of, they're doing a lot of these things. So, you know, free fruit and fancy office spaces and, and whatever. And, and yet, they're still not happy. People are still not happy at work. There's not that energy. There's not that drive. There's not that motivation. And my contention, my, my argument is that you can, you can have a workplace where you do every single one of these things, and it's still not a happy workplace because these are not the things that make us happy at work. There is nothing wrong with free fruit in the office. There's nothing wrong with offering massages. But if you think that's how you create a happy workplace, you never will because it doesn't work that way. Those are not the things that make us happy. In fact, what happens in many workplaces is that they spend all of their time, money, and energy on these things, and then they forget doing the things that actually do work, that actually do make people happy at work. And they do this with the best of intentions, which I think is kind of sad. So what does work? I think a lot of the answers can be found in positive psychology. How many of you know about positive psychology already? Oh, the most of you. Awesome. Traditional psychology is a study of what can go wrong in our minds, psychosis, neurosis, depressions, phobias, etc. Uh, what are they? How can they be fixed? Incredibly important discipline. But in the last 30 years, some people have been asking the opposite question. When are we happy? When do we thrive? When do we feel good? And that's the study of happiness. That's the study of positive psychology. It's absolutely fascinating, and it's very evidence-based. This is not guesswork, this is based on actual research uh, done around the world. So what I want to present here are what I believe are the five most important findings from positive psychology that apply in the workplace. And I believe that if we know about these five and we follow these five, then we can actually make people happy at work. And, and, and this is really good news because if, if all of this, you know, all of these things, the free fruit and the, the fancy office space and the gym, if those were what makes people happy at work, then happiness at work would be only for very few workplaces, only the workplaces who can actually afford all of this, because all of this is hugely expensive. But if we look at positive psychology, we'll find that the things that really make us happy at work can be done in any organization, on any budget, doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't cost a lot of money. So here they are, what I believe are the five most important findings from positive psychology. First of all, that positive emotions have significant positive effects. Your emotional state is not just about how you feel, it's also about how you perform, it's also about your health, it's also about your ability to relate and work well with other people. Um, so feeling good is not just a nice thing to have, it's actually uh, at the, at the, ca is the cause of a lot of the things we want in the workplace, including increased motivation, increased engagement, increased productivity, and increased creativity. Um, and this is news to a lot of companies, because a lot of companies don't focus on positive emotions, they focus on job satisfaction. And I don't think we should. Job satisfaction is what you think about your job, okay? When, you know, once a year, when you fill out the employee satisfaction survey and you check, uh, check off 75 questions, you know, are you satisfied with your salary? Are you satisfied with your commute? Are you satisfied with, I saw this question in a survey once, are you satisfied with the light in the office? <laughs> Scale of one to five. Um, 
This is what a lot of companies focus on, job satisfaction, and that's actually what all of those things we saw before, the, the gym and the free fruit, that's what they create, is job satisfaction. That's what you think about your job, you know, a rational evaluation of your job situation. However happiness at work, what we really want is what you feel about your job, what you feel about, how, do you, how does your job make you feel? You can't go around feeling happy all the time, but does your job mostly cause positive emotions or mostly negative emotions? And that's what we need to focus on, because all of the effects we want come when people are happy right now. When your employees are having a good day today, they do a better job in every single one of these areas. We collect studies that show what happiness does to our job performance, and these are all the studies we've found so far. So happy people are more productive, get more work done. They are more creative, have more and better ideas. They sell more, they are more motivated, they have more energy, they're more resilient, and so on and so on and so on. So, What's becoming increasingly clear if you want your company to be more successful is that you shouldn't focus on satisfaction, you should focus on happiness because happy companies make more money. Let me go back here. Let me go back here. There we go. Happy companies make more money, satisfied companies don't. There is a very, very poor correlation between satisfaction at work and job performance and company results. And there's a very strong correlation between positive emotions and great results. What causes positive emotions? There is a lot of theories on this. Our theory is that it's results and relationships. Arlette mentioned this earlier. When people do great work and are proud of what they do and create meaningful results, and they create those results together with great people, those are the two most reliable sources of positive emotions in the workplace. Nobody experiences positive emotions because there's free fruit in the office. Except one guy. I did a workshop at Lego. And one guy said, no, actually, Alex, the, the fruit can make me really happy. Because every week, when my team gets you know, a fresh supply of fruit, there's only one banana. And if I get the banana, I am so happy. <laughs> yeah. So my tip, based on this finding, is that we need to focus less on job satisfaction, you know, compensation, perks, and titles, and more on the things that actually make people feel good at work, experience positive emotions, and those are results and relationships. Let me show you an example. This is, from, this is from Lego. Now, last year, Lego had, once again, best result ever. They're now the most valuable toy brand in the world. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when, you present, when you're the CEO and you're presenting this, you can do it in a dry and boring way, or you can actually use this to create the feeling of results and relationships by celebrating it with your employees. So here's what the CEO of LEGO did when he announced the result. It is another record-breaking year, uh, the, the best year ever for the LEGO group. So just like uh, at the Oscars or just like in the movie theaters this last year, we are also uh, dancing and singing and saying, everything is awesome, everything is cool when you're part of the team, everything is awesome when you're living in a dream. So uh, <laughs> it has been a great year. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. Um, so less focus on job satisfaction, more focus on positive emotions, and those come from results and relationships. I think that's what he creates when he celebrates with his employees like that. Second important finding from positive psychology is that if you want to be happy, one of the best ways to do that is to appreciate the good things you already have in your life. And that is really, really interesting. And, and why is this so important? It's because otherwise we fall, we, we fall prey to something called negativity bias. Negativity bias is one of the most well understood and studied psychological phenomena. And it basically means that we're much better at remembering bad experiences and we, are, we, we experience negative emotions much more strongly. So the negative in the workplace, we will sort of focus on automatically. We don't need to work to bring out the negative because we just remember that automatically. But the positive, we need to consciously create space to talk about the positive experiences at work. Have a simple conversation, so tell me what you like about your job. Tell me about the best coworker you have. Tell me about the best boss you ever had and why that was an awesome boss, because those conversations don't come automatically. So one of my tips based on this finding would be maybe less focus on identifying and fixing problems in the workplace and more focus on helping people appreciate the things that are already good. If you don't appreciate the good things in your work life, it doesn't matter how many good things you have. You'll never be happy because you don't think, appreciate the good things you already have. And you will always be out there trying to get more and more and more. But it won't work because you don't appreciate the things you already have. 
Here's a ridiculously simple way to do that. This is from one of our clients in Denmark, a company called Scandia, um, where they, they, they put out these cards for just a two-week period. They put out these cards in the office. It's in Danish, it says, my good experiences from today. So the idea is that just before you go home from work, you take one of these cards, you fill it out with two or three good experiences from the day, and then you hang it on this clothesline going all through the offices, all, all through the office. So you get a chance to think about and reflect, you know, what makes me happy at work? What do I like about my job? What is good in this workplace? And that's incredibly important. I want to show you my absolute favorite example of this, and this comes from an IT company in New York called Next Jump. And they really want people to appreciate the good coworkers they have. So once a year, they have an award called the Next Jump Avenger. They have five, five people are named as Avengers, and one is the sort of the wins the, the grand prize. And you don't win this award by being good at your job. You win this award by making other people good at their jobs, by being the kind of person who's always there for others. Um, and I want to show you a, a brief clip from the award ceremony. You're going to see them talk about a guy called Joe. He, he goes on to win the whole thing. And Joe is the leftmost guy of the three young guys on the stage. Uh, he's up there with two of his uh, best friends. They got invited along to the ceremony. Um, and, uh, and here they are talking about Joe. And, and listen, listen to what they're saying about him. Joe cares deeply for everyone he works with. When you ask people to describe him, the word you'll hear most often is patient. When you have a problem, Joe will listen patiently. He'll ask questions and really try to understand what's happening. You don't feel rushed. <laughs> Even if he has 101 other things on, right then, he has all the time in the world for you. And then, when you've finished venting, he'll set about helping you. Olivia, a fellow engineer, described it best. He's always there for you. Whether that means patiently sitting for four hours while you go over and over an upcoming presentation, fixing some code that you screwed up so that you can make your train home, creating long-term technical growth plans to help you become a better developer, or just being there for you, guiding you so that you can figure things out for yourself. Joe's patience and understanding make him someone that you can always go to for help with no judgment or time limit. Because of all of this, Joe's care for his team, his desire to be there to help others tackle demons that he's faced, and his patience in coaching people time and again, is what makes Joe an amazing colleague, friend, and Avenger. I am very proud to ask Joe Rogeri to step forward and accept this Avengers badge. Is that beautiful? If you want to create better teamwork, instead of pointing out all the examples of bad teamwork and saying, don't do this, you can talk about the things that already do work and all the things we have that we're happy about and that we want more of. And that is one of the, the fundamentals of, of happiness. Finding number three that I want to share is, is one of my favorites. Is small actions can have large effects. And very often when we, when we think about happiness at work and how do we create a happy workplace, we think in terms of really big projects, right? You know, we have this massive summer party. It's going to cost a huge amount of money, going to invite everybody along, and that's a huge project. Uh, but, but what we know from positive psychology is that what's actually more effective maybe is, is doing many small things, and quite small things can have a very, very large effect on people's happiness. Um, so, so I would urge you to think less in terms of, of, of a few big activities and maybe more in terms of many small activities. Let me show you again an example, because um, I love to get practical. This is from IKEA, uh, one of our favorite clients and a company that focuses a lot on making their employees happy. So this is a praise wall where uh, co-workers can praise each other. This hangs in, in one of their warehouses uh, on the way to the cafeteria, so everybody passes by here at least once a day. And the idea is very simple. If you want to praise one of your co-workers, you take a card, you write on it why you want to praise them, and you put it on the, on the wall. And they, you know, they had that up for two weeks, and that was it. And then they moved on to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. This takes no time, it costs no money, and it actually creates a lot of happiness. Maybe just as much happiness as a massive summer party with a huge budget. Um, so many of these small things, instead of thinking in terms of a few big events, think in terms of many small events. Uh, next, finding number four, is that unexpected activities can have very, very large effects. And our lead showed Karsten and Karsten earlier, who showed up in the, you know, in, in the, 
in the morning and made did this with their employees, right? Greeted everybody like this with a free breakfast. I think that's a fantastic example of creating happiness at work. Nobody knew they were going to do this. They just did it. Um, so what's kind of interesting is that many of the initiatives that we, we make in an organization to make people happy at work are scheduled way in advance. Everybody knows there's a summer party coming. Everybody knows there's free breakfast every Monday. Everybody knows there's a Christmas party. Everybody knows there's a Christmas present. And so these things work, but they don't work as well as the unexpected thing, uh, things. It turns out that our brain likes positive surprises. And that's the finding from positive psychology, that when something nice happens to you that you expect, it makes you a little happier. But when something nice happens to you that surprises you, it makes you a lot happier. Um, and we can use that at work to, to, to do more surprising, unplanned, new activities. Now, Carson and Carson know this. Um, they did this one Monday, and then they didn't do this again. Because they know that if you do it again, it won't have the same effect. If you, what if they, what, just out of curiosity, what if they did this every Monday? Then the effect would be smaller and smaller and smaller, until one day they don't do it anymore. And then what happens? People become really angry. Where's my free breakfast? <laughs> Um, because it, it, at, once it's expected, it doesn't make you happy anymore. It's just something, it's an entitlement. I'm entitled to this. Um, so think more in terms of, of surprising activities. So a couple of months later, when it was Christmas, they loaded up uh, uh, this cart with dessert and went around to every desk and into every meeting and served up you know, this free dessert uh, that we eat in Denmark around Christmas time called Rieselamang. Um, yeah. So think in terms of small, unexpected, random activities. And the fifth and final tip I want to share is that if you really want to be happy, the best thing you can do is make someone else happy. And this is a finding uh, they've, they've found again and again and again in positive psychology, is that when we do nice things for ourselves, it makes us a little happier. But when we do nice things for, our, for somebody else, it makes us a lot happier. And by the way, it also makes that person happy. Uh, just, just to mention one experiment they did, they took a group of American college students a lot of the research in positive psychology is done on American college students because American college students will do anything for $20, okay? So they took half the people and gave them $20 and, say, and said, spend this $20 on yourself. And then they took the other group and say, spend this $20 on someone else. You know, take a friend out for coffee, take a friend to the movies, but spend it on somebody else. Um, and then they measured their happiness before and after. And it turns out that the people who spent the money on somebody else became much happier had a much larger effect. So, so this, this idea that we want to be happy, but we also want the people around us to be happy, is, is, is one of the, the fundamentals of, of positive psychology. And I think it says something incredibly positive about us human beings as a species. There are a ton of ex uh, experiments on this. I want to show you my favorite. In this experiment, they take a young child, a toddler, um, and put the toddler in a room with a parent. The parent does nothing. The parent is just there to make sure that the child feels safe and comfortable. Um, and then there is an, uh, an adult in the room who needs help in some way. And then you see what the child does completely unprompted without telling the child to do anything. And here's an example. Isn't that amazing? This is our true nature. This is who we are. We want to be happy. And we want those around us to be happy. And if we can help them become happier, we become even happier too. So one, of the, one, one thing you can think in terms of is less doing things for employees. Many of these programs that we normally do are about doing things for employees. Here's a gym you can go to. Here's a massage. Here's free coffee. Here's free smoothies. And less of that and more helping people do things for others. Uh, because that has a much larger effect. One of my favorite examples of this comes from Zappos. Zappos is a company based in Vegas in the US. They sell clothes and shoes online. Annual turnover is around, uh, annual revenue is about $3 billion, so it's a pretty big deal. Uh, really happy staff, incredibly high customer satisfaction. And they really think in terms of this. So for instance, they want to help their employees do nice things for the coworkers. And they do that in a million ways, but one of my favorites is a program called Zappos Wishes. This is a screenshot from their internal internet page. And if you're an employee at Zappos, you can go on there and you can make a wish. 
So for instance, you know, this country in Western Star is playing in Vegas next week, it's sold out, I really want to get tickets, can somebody help me? Or it can be something more serious, like I just moved to Vegas uh, with my, well, you know, I'm a lone parent with a child, I, just, I got an apartment but I have no furniture, can somebody maybe, you know, lend me some, a bed maybe, maybe a, t a table and some chairs, uh, and then you can make a wish. And then, as an employee at Zappos, you can go on there, you can say, grant a wish, and you can say, yeah, I know the guy who arranged that concert, I can get you tickets. What happened with, with the parent who'd moved to Vegas was actually somebody said, you know, I have some extra furniture, I'll give it to you. And she got, you know, uh, the, her entire apartment furnished uh, just by people granting that wish. Um, <clears throat> I love that program, and it, it really makes deep connections between Zappos employees. Um, they have another one in a similar way, vein. Let's say you're, you work at Zappos and suddenly you discover that somebody has a birthday today and you're like, oh my God, I want to do something nice for that person. You can actually go to the HR department, they will sell you balloons or you know, banners or whatever you want. And, and I kid you not, the, the, the program is called Balloons and Shit. Package number one, one Mylar balloon, four latex balloons, yada yada. And you can buy a package and then you can celebrate your your coworker. They, they also help their employees do nice things for the customers. This is not just about the employees, the coworkers, also about the customers. For instance, they encourage their uh, employees to write nice handwritten letters to customers. Uh, here's a letter saying, we're so happy you're one of our customers. And they do this all the time. They can send a customer flowers if they want. Um, and, and again, making the customer happy makes you happy. And on top of that, so, uh, uh, so for employees, for customers, but also for the community, there are a lot of homeless people in, in Vegas. It's a huge problem. And they do a lot of work with homeless people and with other people in need. And here's, um, here's a brief clip from a thing they did in Vegas where they uh, invited all the homeless in the city to come in and they would get a Thanksgiving dinner and a free pair of shoes. And here are some, uh, some images from that. We got a great, great day planned for you. We're going to be able to provide you a brand new pair of shoes, be able to provide you a brand new pair of socks, and be able to provide you a, a wonderful Thanksgiving feast. Yes, yes. And the line was long, but I knew it would be, because everybody wanted to go. Well, one of the things is uh, we need shoes. Of course, I have one leg and a shoe, but I like to be styling anyway, you know. I got these, and they're designer, yeah, of course, nice. and they're getting awfully dirty, but <laughs> what are you going to do? I live in a shelter, right? <laughs> so, so, all of the, so all of the employees at Sappos were invited to come work at that event, you know, helping people pick shoes, helping serve the food, helping uh, people uh, in the line and so on. So this, this idea that instead of doing things for people, you help them do things for others, will make them much, much happier. Uh, it's also much more meaningful. So this is sort of the, the, the slide. Uh, and, and you could look at, you know, what are you doing for your, for your coworkers, for your employees? What's your company doing for the, its people? And if it's mostly over on the left-hand side, I don't think it's gonna work very well. I'm not saying you have to scrap everything on the left-hand side, but try to maybe think more in terms of, of, of the things on the right-hand side, because according to the science of happiness, those are the things that actually work. Thank you. Why don't you turn back to that slide? Sure. Because that's a nice introduction to positive psych uh, psychology, I think. Thank it you for that. Is. Yeah. It is, it is. Um, there's more to it, but uh, if you only have 20 minutes, that might be it. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you talked about the benefits of positive psychology, of implying that in the workplace. Yeah. But positive psychology is also very often misunderstood. So tell us, Alexander, <laughs> your view on what is positive psychology not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep thinking, I keep hearing people say, well, positive psychology is just about being happy all the time. Yeah. And nobody's happy all the time, okay? If somebody's happy all the time, there's something wrong with them. Yeah. Um, so so I, th I would say it's about being authentic in your emotions. And if you're having a bad day at work, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Having a bad day at work is a human right, and everybody should be allowed to have that. Now, if you're having a bad week or a bad month or a bad year, maybe you should do something about it, okay? Uh, but positive psychology is not about saying everybody must be happy all the time. Uh, that's positive thinking, which is a horrible, horrible thing. 
Um, and, and, and nobody should believe in positive thinking, this idea that you can always think positively no matter what. Um, that, that's a terrible idea. It puts a lot of pressure on people who are actually depressed or in a bad mood. Yeah, and that's a very important note. Yes. Um, Bullshit, yeah. You do a lot of speeches and conferences. I also do it uh, sometimes. And uh, I think that the most recent question you get after uh, a speech and conference is, oh, I wish my boss had been here. <laughs> Because yeah. my boss is not into this. He does not even know about it. And yeah. he's not even interested. Yeah. Actually, he's quite unhappy. Yeah. And he is contagious. He's spreading his bad behaviors, his negative uh, attitudes. Hey, when I look at you, I can see that, that, that you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, yeah. So when, when these people come home and want to impl implement some of this, Yeah. And the boss is not into it. Yeah. How would you handle that? I, I would say there are two arguments you can use. And one is that happy companies make more money. The science is very clear on this uh, for, for all the reasons that I showed earlier. And what you can do that's very effective is find, find out what is, your, what is your boss's pain points, what's keeping them up at night. Maybe employee turnover is very high. You know, we're, leaving all, we're losing all of our best employees to the competition. And you can say, well, if we make people happier, they will stay longer. Maybe absenteeism is very high. And we know that when people are happy at work, they become sick less often. Maybe, you know, customer satisfaction is down. You know, customers are leaving. And you can show, well, if, if employees are happy, the customers will be happy and they will stay with us longer. So find out what their pain points are and show how happiness at work can address this. That's, that's sort of one argument that, this, you know, happy companies make more money. The other argument is more ethical in that, you know, unhappy companies ruin people's lives. If we, if we run a company where people are miserable most of the time, spend a lot of time experiencing negative emotions, that affects their health, it affects their careers, it affects their private lives, their relationships. Every aspect of their lives is, is negatively impacted by hating people's jobs. And you can look your boss in the eye and say, is that the kind of company you want to run? Is that the effect that you want to have on your employees? And if your boss says, yes, that's exactly what I want, then it's time to quit and look for a new job. And if the boss says, no, I don't want that, then, well, let's do something about it. Here are some really simple, cheap things we can do that don't take a lot of time and don't cost a lot of money. So that's number one. You can try to convince your boss. Yes. But one thing nobody should forget, you are the chief happiness officer in your own life. Oh, yeah. And it's your responsibility to take care of your happiness. Only yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander.